Hello, my name is Alex Shosh, and I'm an architect within the Microsoft Group at NetApp. Today we're going to be talking about dynamic versus fixed VHD performance, and talk about some of the mythology and uh, misconceptions around dynamic VHDs. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about this, and uh, it's very strong guidance from NetApp not to use dynamic VHDs. There still seems to be some misunderstandings, though. Let's be very clear. Dynamic VHDs are not recommended for production use by Microsoft. Um, you can see there there's a direct quote from TechNet. Uh, and that article is called Planning for Disks and Storage. If you search TechNet for that string, you'll find it. Also, I was very interested to hear that I was a tech, tech ed last year, uh, session virtualization 207, which was delivered by EMC, and they said exactly the same thing. So if Microsoft and NetApp and EMC all agree, then you can probably take it to the bank that that's the right thing to do. One of the core issues with dynamic VHDs is that Windows must dynamically grow the dynamic VHDs upon write. This is a relatively expensive operation and results in um, uneven performance as well as degraded write performance. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. Um, so here we have a case where we're copying a file. It's a couple gigs in size. It's an ISO file. It's actually Windows Server 2008 R2 ISO. And we're copying it to the E drive here. And an E drive is a traditional, is a, sorry, is a thin fixed VHD, which we created using the thin fixed process. And as you can see, it takes about 13 seconds to copy that file. So now we're going to copy the exact same file to the F drive. Now the F drive is a different VHD. It's a dynamic VHD. And so we're going to go ahead and run exactly the same command, copying the same file using the same uh, VM. So everything's exactly the same. The only difference is, is that the first time we did it to a fixed VHD. The second time we're doing it to a dynamic VHD. And this time it took 17 seconds. Ah, I can hear you thinking, well, Alex, 17 seconds versus 13 seconds, that's not really a huge difference. OK, well, let's just keep doing this for a while and see what happens. Uh, if you keep doing it, you can see that we're continuing to repeat this process. So 12, 13, 14. So we've got 21 seconds, and now 48 seconds. And you can see that the time that it takes to copy this file, first of all, it varies wildly. Second of all, it takes quite a bit longer uh, sometimes than the fixed. The reason is because, as you can see here, the underlying file, this dynamic 100 gig VHD file, is actually being allocated by Windows at write time. And so there's a little delay in the writes as, allocate, as Windows allocates the file. Um, now, Windows is trying to do this in the most efficient way that it can. So sometimes if the write load is low enough, you won't see a huge difference. But if you go over that magic precipice, then bad things can happen. So I can hear you thinking, well, Alex, what about the other file? You only did it once. So OK, we'll go back to the E drive now. And you can see that we've, I've actually forwarded the video up a little bit. So you can see you've got 19, 20, and we're at 17 seconds, 14 seconds. So yes, the performance is varying on the fixed, but not nearly as much, and it's always lower than the dynamic. So as you can see, write performance on a fix is much better. So let's go forward a little bit. So let's set up a constant load, right? So in this case, we're doing random um, uh, write IOPS, and you can see there's about 500 write IOPS inside the VM. And if you go to the host, sure enough, the host is reporting about 500 write IOPS on that underlying run. So the guest and the host perceive that they're both per, per, per servicing about 500 IOPS. Now we're just looking at the write side right now, not the read side. So the write IOPS is about 500. So let's figure out, so how do we look at, this, at the contr underlying controller? What we can do is we can go directly into the controller and we can issue what's called a LUN stats command for that underlying LUN. And you can see we're, we supported a, a very large number of write IOPS. You have to do a little math. Turns out this is about 4,000 seconds, right? So it's, uh, it's over, a little over an hour. It's about an hour and 20 minutes. So it's about 4,000 seconds. So if you divide that 291,000 by 4,000, what you actually wind up with is about 625 IOPS, IOs per second. So the VM was consuming 500. The host was consuming about 500. But the SAN was actually servicing 625 IOPS. So that's 124% of actual delivered load. So you basically get a 20% degradation in performance just because you're using dynamic as opposed to fixed. And the reason why this occurs is it's due to misaligned writes. So this graphic is trying to show aligned versus misaligned writes. And in a dynamically allocated VHD, some of your writes will be aligned and some weren't. So if th what these dotted lines are trying to show is the theoretical alignment between blocks. And these red blocks coming in are writes. So that was an aligned write. But here we have a misaligned write. So you can see there are two IOPS were performed on the controller instead of just one. So again, we have now an aligned write. And then sure enough, this block is spanning. So now we have two writes. What's happening is the underlying controller actually has to touch two waffle blocks 
just to modify one NTFS block. And that's what causes these issues. So as you can see, the performance of a dynamic VHD, this misalignment, can have severe impacts on the performance of your Hyper-V environment. So hopefully this helps you understand the impact of misaligned uh, dynamic VHDs and why dynamic VHDs, are not dynamic VHDs are not recommended in production by Microsoft or NetApp. Hope you enjoyed this information and please keep an eye on blogs.netapp.com slash msenviro for the latest and greatest.